the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Ellsworth? Here. Mr. Fagan? Here. Mrs. Golden? Here. Mrs. Kine? Here. Ms. Warren? Here. Okay, we'll uh, ask for the approval of the agenda with one small change. I'm going to move the personnel actions until after the executive session. Um, can I get a motion to approve that agenda? So moved. Second? Second. Thank you. <coughs> Mrs. Golden? Yes. Mrs. Ward? Yes. Mrs. Kine? Mrs. Kine? Yes. Mr. Fagan? Yes. And Mr. Elder? Yes. And our presentation? Yes. Uh, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Rebecca Princehorn from Brickler and Graydon to give a presentation tonight to the board concerning the upcoming meeting. Um, would you prefer me to stand or sit? However you feel comfortable. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, I must tell you, um, I joined Fricker in 1981 and have worked with the district that entire time. So it's been 43 years. Oh Love time. <laughs> and worked on the high school projects and on a variety of things since then. I open with that because I think perhaps, you know, sometimes we forget history, and you would have at your places uh, some election history that I pulled off in preparation for tonight and for meetings with um, Dan Burke. And the two things I would direct your attention to, if you look down levy elections, the last time this district had new money it was 2013. It was the emergency levy that passed at the November 5th, 2013 election. If you turn the page, you'll see in terms of permanent improvement money, the half mill that was passed in 1999, that expired after 23 years. That was part of the OFCC high school project. And the board may remember once that obligation ended, we prepared a resolution for the board to transfer money remaining in Fund 034 to permanent improvement. So if you look at it this way, 1996, March 19, 1996 was the last time this district had new money for permanent improvement. 1996 and 2013 are alive. So that is a little bit of setting the stage for where you are now. You are at the 20 mile floor. And Stan and Bart both, I believe, went to a meeting with County Auditor Dropsy. And being at the 20 mill floor means the effective rate of your existing levies will not be further reduced. It doesn't mean you're going to get any new money. It just, excuse the expression, stops the bleeding. They won't be further reduced. And just to give you, again, some perspective, in 1976, the year that House Bill 920 was passed, they collapsed all your levies. 26.4 voted no at that time. Right now, it only collects at 8.4. Just, again, to give you perspective. So, where does that leave the board? in terms of trying to make a recent decision about what to do. At the 2004, that basically means you have two options. A dollar-based levy, an emergency levy, 
um, which you have had before if you look at that, that further history. That's what you did back in 2015, and you've renewed it since. Or an income tax. Neither of those count against the 20 mil floor. Or a combination of those two things. So I want to briefly talk to you. If you look at this landscape first thing, common options, traditional emergency. It can be for one to ten years, will not take you off the floor. Good thing. You just specify the dollar amount that you need. If you look right below that on page one, income tax. It can be any number of years or continuing. Again, it doesn't count against the floor. The real differentiator with an income tax is whether it's on all income or earned income only. Barb has done some homework on that. And as you can imagine, an all income tax or a traditional income tax, whatever percentage you would pick, it's going to produce more money because it's taxing everything. And that includes pensions, railroad retirement, and in some communities, that's a heavy lift, I'll be honest. And earned only income tax, taxes, wages, and salaries. It's pass through income for sub S corporations. Basically, it's, it's wage earners who are more likely to have kids in school, people in the world. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to tell you you're at the time of work and you ought to be thinking about the best approach given that status. Emergency levy, income tax, or if you turn to the third page, a combination. It's interesting, the combined income tax and property tax levy that's listed there at the bottom, they don't call it an emergency levy, but it is. It's a dollar-based levy with an income tax, one ballot question. And again, it does not count against the floor, so it doesn't monkey with that. And the thing I found interesting when I was looking at for history, if you had ever tried an income tax, it would be at the bottom of page two. This district has never given that option to its voters. Clare Fork, some other districts up this way have them. Again, it's not a right or wrong thing. It's what's the best fit for Mansfield City at this point in time, given that you're at the point of law. So, regardless of, of which way you would go to get to the desired dollar threshold, whether it's emergency, whether it's income tax, or a combination, your deadlines for the November 5th election are slightly different. The overall deadline is August 7th. So everything, everything would have to be done into the Board of Elections. And I, when I do presentations for OSBA and the other professional groups, I say, you know, there are some things you do in person, like getting married. Taking your election proceedings to the Board of Elections is one of those things you do. Make sure it's there. But, joking aside, for a straight emergency, there's no intermediate deadline. If you have this part 
of ballot deadline. Number two, emergency levy, you really just look at it, the overall deadline. Two resolutions, I mean, you guys just renew one, you know what it is. And in between the two, you think certification to auditor drop fee, he certifies back, you pass the second one, you get everything in. Income tax, number three on this chart, does have an intermediate deadline. You need to do Either way, if you're doing a standalone income tax or a combination of the property, you need to have the first resolution into the tax commissioner for November 5th by July 25th. So you've got a little bit of time, not a lot of time, but you've got some time. If you turn the page, you'll see um, Actually, I smile every time I turn the page because May 6th is my birthday. Mm -hmm. um, that election, if you could wait that long, is a special election under Ohio law. And that's a little bit of a gotcha. And I want to make sure you know this. A number of years ago, some of you might remember, there used to be a February special election. Well, when they killed February, the legislature also made the May election in an odd-numbered year a special election. And so if Mansfield City Schools was on the ballot and you were the only one, there was no children's services, DD, library, you know, county-wide kind of question, you'd have to pay the cost of that election. And I would don't know if you've had a chance to find out from the Board of Elections what it would cost. No, I absolutely forgot. Actually, I'll get, I'll find that out for the board. What does that mean? Pay the cost. What does that mean? Sorry, I don't. Um, yeah. You got to pay the poll workers, the security system, oh, the literally. whole oh. cost of voting cards. Mm -hmm. I have a district south of you, Delaware County, not that huge of a district. They were told sixty thousand dollars. Special election, excuse me, that you share the cost with who's ever on that ballot at that time. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Yeah, and there may or may not be. There may not be anybody. You sure. burden the whole yeah. cost. Yeah, if you know the Big Walnut School District, they're the ones with that outlet mall right there off of seventy one. Sixty thousand dollars. Is there anybody else on that ballot at that time? Yeah. <laughs> they decided, once they heard $60,000, they decided not to do it because they knew that would not resonate well. Okay. How much it would be for you all, I, I simply don't know. But with increasing concerns about election security, the army of consultants, everybody has the cost. Going up. We even had township, four precincts. Everybody voted at the high school. They were told forty thousand dollars. So it's something to know. Mm -hmm. um, but then November of 2025 um, is a normal election, but you have board, school board races, and folks may not want to. Same deadlines. I mean, you have to do the resolution again if it would fail. Mm -hmm. No, if we like, if we decided now and it failed now, we decided to do it again. Well, you would maybe avoid May because of the cost, mm -hmm. and then we have to do it to do over. Same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The number of votes required for um, an income tax, an emergency levy, <coughs> you just need a majority. If you do a combination, you need a two-thirds. Can't have part of a person, so that means four years. I am happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, I know you've been studying this, you're intelligent folks. I don't want to insult your intelligence, but I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. So, just so I'm clear. So, if it's separate, it's a majority. If we combine them, it's two thirds. Correct. And it's just the way the statute. And the way it'll read on the ballot is one vote. For both. Two paragraphs. 
So one can't pass, one can't fail. They can't correct. Mm -hmm. When you say 20 mil floor from one hurdles, if we go either, either of these directions, what do you mean? What I mean, I just had this similar conversation with Stan a few minutes ago. Again, a bit of history. 1976. If you were around then, you know there was very high inflation. I bought my first house in that era, and I got a 14% adjustable mortgage, and I thought it was really good. <laughs> it was high inflation. 1976, George Voinovich introduces House Bill 920 in the Ohio House of Representatives. What it does, and this is back to the beginning, that's what I was talking about, over time, it subtracts out inflationary growth from your tax base. That's why your 1976 current expense millage was voted at 26.4, but only collects at 8.41. And that's not on the history, it's on a different sheet that I have. Again, another example, uh, 1991, the district did a 5.7 mil voted levy. Today, that collects at 2.7. What happens is you get to benefit from new construction in the district, but any inflationary growth in your tax base, residential, commercial, then that, gets subtracted out by the Department of Taxation and you have an effective rate. Put another way, you're only ever going to get what you got in the first year. It doesn't grow unless you have new construction. And that is why Ohio school districts are constantly having to go back. So either of our, if we were to do traditional <coughs> or income tax, it would not affect that 20 mil. Floor. Correct. Emergency. Emergency. I'm sorry. Or income tax because it's dollar based. It's like a bond issue. You put a dollar amount there, and then county auditor will figure. The millage. Okay, so deflationary, we could actually earn more later. We could not. We only get what we initially signed for. With an emergency that is dollar based. Okay. Whatever dollar figure you present to Mr. Dropsy, he's going to give you the millage. And it's like a bond issue. Over time, as the pie grows, mm -hmm. that millage is going to go down mm -hmm. because you get to catch the inflation and growth. Unlike a millage based property tax, which is subject to a reduction factor. Income tax is more elastic. And you may remember Great Recession, from <coughs> Taxation was having a conference call with all school districts in the state that were having in and had income tax to kind of let them know where things were. Fast forward, I think, and this is, I guess, a little bit of Becky's philosophy, it's a nice arrow to have in your quiver. If you feel as though too much property tax is not appropriate for this district and you want to have more of a balance, an income tax <coughs> is a nice complement <coughs> to all property. And this district, I was a little surprised, has never even tried. Why? I, I, I don't remember in the years that I've worked with y'all why that is, but it's never been tried. Anybody have any questions? <clears throat> well, I will say for all the reporters in the room. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Along with our cost-cutting measures, it is needed. And obviously you've heard the history, but uh, it, it, we do need new money. So that's all I will say, and I will accept the motion then to approve the combined levy. Um. Are we going to do that now? Can I interject? Sure. Board President, 
we'll need to draft. Oh, so that. you're not asking for resolution tonight? Oh, no. Okay. No, I thought right. you wanted just information. Okay. Yeah. Um, Thank you. If, if you do decide to do that, we'll prepare the paperwork like we always do. And then you will have to figure out the dollar amount of the emergency portion. I call it emergency, even though it's not called that. The dollar amount is going to be emergency, and then on the income tax side, you'll have to weigh traditional base versus earned income base. And then we'll have to identify, it's, it's kind of backwards, you have to pass a resolution that requests the tax commissioner to tell you what the percentage is. You give them a dollar figure. <coughs> so in a way, that's a good thing because you can work with the administration. What's our target? And if we're going to have both, how much one versus the other? And that's maybe a discussion that you want to have at another point in time. And these resolutions need to be, if we were to do the income, they have to be in by 26. Just to the tax commissioner. To the tax commissioner. So we would send it to Auditor Drop Seat for the property at the same time. You'll get, I don't do things piecemeal, you'll get the whole package. But you've got to, it's only as good as the information you put in it. So you all need to decide if you're going to go that way, what the balance is. And then let us know. We'll get the paperwork for you with all the forms that need to go the different places. What's the time span we need to get that information to you? Sometimes people want to give me a couple hours. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope it would be better than that. Yeah, me too. I mean, <laughs> happens. <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah, the it's board good. decides uh, exactly what they want, then we would uh, contact. Ms. Prince Horn and she would uh, draw up the resolution of necessity and the tax the commissioner whole, resolution. The whole and we could approve both of those the first night. Then we'd certify that to the county auditor and send it to the tax commissioner, both pieces, and then come back and approve the uh, resolution and, uh, to proceed. Yeah. And then uh, after we do that, then I would personally go in person <laughs> <laughs> and marry the Board of Election no. <laughs> and file that because they do give you a date stamp and everything when you file that and it's very important to have them draw that up because the ballot language has to be, and I'm not kidding, a capital T if it has a capital T in it. Am I correct? You have to have the ballot language exactly as they require you have it or they'll Pull it off of the ballot. So who does the ballot? The language? attorney. <laughs> we'll prepare it. It'll go first to the Board of Elections on or before August 7th. Mm -hmm. And then it goes to the Secretary of State. And House Bill 140 um, has made life kind of interesting. Um, that ballot language, at least on the property tax side, has changed some. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why we want to be holding your no offense, but I'm kind of holding your hand all the way along because I cannot tell you for November already how many county auditors God bless them. So format wrong. And I know it'll get rejected by the Secretary of State, so we want to eyeball everything every step of the way. So if we do an income tax, is that still July twenty sixth? That is for the tax commissioner. For the tax commissioner. The board election still goes on the So you want to work, I don't know, you know, what your schedule is, but you've got, like I say, you've got some time to sort this out and then let us know and we can have everything ready for you for regular meetings or special meetings, however, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's a regular special meeting. And Barb and Stan and you have been looking at other school districts around us that have been some practice. Yeah, Stan has a so yeah. there's, a, there's a number of, of various school districts around us in Richmond County mm -hmm. as well as in the state and of course um, from rural school districts to urban school districts and um, all of their percentages vary some from 
a half percent to um, to one percent to one and a quarter to one and a half, and there are some that have two percent. Uh, so it all varies based on what their needs. So as we, have, we don't know if it, if it was traditional or earned, we just know that uh, you know, once again there are over two hundred of them that have uh, that are doing that on some version of that. Well, just anecdotally, <coughs> the higher percentages are Western Ohio because it's rural. Mm -hmm. And those voters favor income tax. But that's not to say some Reynoldsburg has income tax. I mean, so you've got urbans that have income tax that are usually smaller. Rural has higher percentages. And so anybody that lives in Mansfield City that works, whether or not we decide about the pension or not, whether they are a property owner or not, they would be paying into this. Not exactly. This is, I'm glad you asked that. A school district income tax is where you live. Where you live. So within this has school. nothing to do with where you work. Municipal income tax is where you work. So you would pay income tax if you resided in Mansfield. If you live in Mansfield, but you work in Shelby. Where you work doesn't matter. No. no. It's where you, you pay the 1% or yeah. whatever. Well, I'm saying your employer in Shelby would have to take out that yes. Yes. separate Oh, from the administration yes. yeah, standpoint, yeah. But you live in Mansfield City School District, you would pay it. Whether you rent, whether you own, whether you direct it. And then the pension part is just based on whether we decide or not. If someone for retirement or an uh, army pension, whatever, that would be our decision. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming and giving us this information. And we look forward to working with you. Great. Thank you. And if there are any subsequent things that occur to you, just let Barbara and I know. I'll get right back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, is there any public participation? None. Okay. Board member comments. Anybody have any board member comments? Good. Um, the Music Boosters is hosting a Meet the Director Night for night. Um, so it's going to give an opportunity for 8th through 12th graders to meet the new band director. Um, we are going to have information on the upcoming marching band season, the calendar, and um, have some food too, not that that really matters. Um, but it is going to be at the... Um, <coughs> okay. What's the date? Tomorrow night? 6 p.m. Not enough. <laughs> <coughs> Um, I have a comment too. Um, my grandson, who is a going to be a fourth grader at Spring Mill STEM, um, was able to take part in the Tiger basketball uh, camp that they're running at the high school right now, and that's our coaches, and um, they've probably got it's K through six. They probably got 50 kids, but for two nights they teach them the fundamentals. Talk to them about you know how important it is to get your grades, uh, things like that. So you know one of those feeder programs we talked about, mm -hmm. and uh, you know and it's going on tonight in five minutes. <laughs> okay, um, nothing under approval for board matters. Superintendent report. Uh, yes, President Nels, with members of the board, we have uh, two uh, events that are coming up here, one this week and one next week. Uh, this coming Thursday at uh, Mansfield Senior High Auditorium is the Adult Education Graduation. Uh, that will start at 6.30 p.m. Uh, Andrea Cartier Fiso will be placing them in that program. And then next Saturday, June 15th, we will have a number of our students involved in Juneteenth, which will be downtown Mansfield. And um, once again, I, I know that um, I've been told that our cheerleaders will be involved in that. And then uh, hopefully as we move on, that our band will be a part of that program as well. So uh, those are two big events. Things are winding down for the most part for uh, and a lot of things for um, 
for uh, extracurricular activities, the simple conditioning programs that are going on right now in some camps. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, at this time, uh, I'll make a motion we'll go into executive session to consider the employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee. We will be voting when we come back on our personnel matters. Is there a second? Second. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Elswick? Yes. Mr. Fagan? Yes. Mrs. Golden? Yes. Mrs. Kine? Yes. Mrs. 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 Y